All right, so the teaching for today is um, about paradox. And this comes from my experience of receiving clairvoyant images. And, that, you know, they come into your imagination and you don't know if you're making them up or not at first. But at some level, you are always making them up because images are generated by your mind. And if you're having an image, you made it up. But where is the source of that image? And the two ways that I've, I've uh, learned to tell if the source is from my ego versus the source being from uh, maybe a place that knows more than my ego, um, or my conscious mind versus my supra-conscious mind, not my like subconscious with all the guck in it, but a super supra-conscious. Because um, like to me, when I like free associate, Often that's my subconscious. That's not anything. That's that's good to do in therapy with somebody. Like, what do you think of when you do this? Like, that's there. But for uh, divining and really get getting um, images that are therapeutic, I like to experience them as coming from outside of myself. And the way I experience them as coming outside of myself is either humor or paradox. So it's just so funny, the images, like I couldn't have consciously made up some of the puns and the different things that get going. Um, of course, at some level I do make them up, but, but my experience of when it's really funny, something that comes in, um, that's a sign that I'm in touch with something larger than me in a, in a kind of an exalted or good way. And then the other way is if it's paradox. If there's just something that doesn't that's like the opposite of what you would expect. And um, this is uh, talked about philosophically, like in Taoism, they talk about um, doing and not doing. And there's other ways to, to work with this as being and not being. Um, something is and it is not. Um, access consciousness has this phrase I love everything is the opposite of what it appears to be nothing is the opposite of what it appears to be and you sort of stand in that paradox and what it does is it loosens our grip on our matrix so pretend like we have a matrix around us a consciousness matrix that's filtering out um, information um, we develop this matrix by being a baby and growing up and, and kind of learning what was important and what wasn't important. And we have barriers to perception as a result of this um, matrix, this consciousness matrix that we're in. And what we can't think of or what we can't perceive can often not come into our, our, um, our existence. And it can't, or even if it's there, it doesn't seem to matter because we're just like overlooking it. Um, but sometimes it can't even just appear, it can't manifest at all. So how do we manufacture or reverse engineer this loosening of our matrix? And, or how do we elicit paradox? And um, I'd like us to, to think of how we can do this right now. So um, let's, let's try out a couple doing and not doing. And if any of you on the, on the chat have an idea of how you would do and not do, um, that would be great. So one way we can do, oh, the, oh, so another little story is um, that the first time I facilitated a cancer cure, um, it rocked my world because I had just been putting my hands on this man and doing rapid image cycling and feeling I was very unconfident. I did not, I hoped that I would be helping him, but I really didn't believe it because it was sort of beyond belief that I could, um, you know, that this, this fourth stage squamous cell cancer could be cured um, with just a laying on of hands, even though I wanted it to. Um, and that, so I just followed the, followed the plan and uh, got the confidence I needed by being mentored with Bill Bankston. But the first time it happened, the big disconnect was, oh, I was really important part of this healing and I had nothing to do with it. I absolutely did not do that thing, and yet somehow I had everything to do with it. Um, and it was sort of, dis it's sort of like it warped my matrix in such that I had to like 
broaden my perception of the world. Like, if I could do that, if I could do and not do that, you know, why couldn't I lose weight? Or why couldn't I, you know, do all these other things that seem so hard? You know, if I could do one impossible thing, why couldn't I do all impossible things? Um, and what I've learned since then is that doing impossible things um, means shifting your matrix, all right? And, um, you know, it's not always, it's the not doing is that we're not in, really in charge of it, yet we certainly do invite it in, and we certainly do go take actions, things like that. So in today's distance healing, how can we do and not do it? So the doing is it that you're here, you're watching the video. And the then once we um, actually start the distance healing, you'll be following along and you'll you'll be doing the, the, the guided visualization. And I would say that that doing of the guided visualization is not the doing that does the healing. And yet it seems to facilitate it, all right? So you, it sort of, we, we do it, but we're lightly attached to it. And then say we're imagining a gatekeeper, because that's part of this, this, um, this guided visualization that we do every week. Um, say we imagine a gatekeeper. So we could think, okay, I want my gatekeeper to be a wise old woman, or I want my gatekeeper to be my power animal, or I want my gatekeeper to be Jesus, or I want my gatekeeper to be somebody. That would be a doing thing. And then a not doing thing would be to just ask for the gatekeeper to appear. And then you would, the doing that you would do is then interact with it as if it's real, as if it as if it um, is important. Um, and then once we're gathered around the circle and I'm saying the names, this is super helpful to do and not do. So yes, you listen to the names being recited. You might even imagine things um, happening and maybe and you're spinning your, your cylinder around you and you're doing the things that I guide people to do. Um, but you're also not doing anything, okay? And that not doing anything is actually a very super important thing. Detachment is the name of the game here. And it's just so tricky to, we're so used to it. Like if I pick up this thing, I'm holding it, right? I'm doing something, I'm holding it. So if I'm visualizing everybody getting better, well then I'm like zapping them with healing intention. And I would say the place that I need to hold this this rod for healing is kind of in an automatic part of me because I can hold this and talk clearly, right? And I'm I'm aware that I'm holding it because I can feel it, but um, I could actually become unaware of it and I would still be holding it. My attention could go in and out of that. And that's what I want you to do during this guided set this guided session is I want you to be following the visualization and knowing that the healing's happening but have a very light touch with it. So you're going to do the visualization and not do it. We're going to do this guided, um, uh, we're going to do the distance healing and we're going to not do the distance healing because I don't know how to heal these people consciously. But I do know that when I straddle these two worlds of doing and not doing, that sometimes really great things happen. So um, Dorothy says, is it to do with getting your ego out of the way? Um, yes and no. The not doing is definitely having your ego out of the way, but the doing is having your ego present. Okay, because your ego has to visualize, right? And so you're in two worlds. So it's because if you got your ego out of the way, you could just surrender. You could go up to a very high, high, high thing. It gets very spacey and meditative up there. Um, feels very lovely. Um, and it, I don't think it's as powerful as being in two worlds at the same time, as generating that paradox. And most distance healing and most energy healing has you get very congruent with a detached space of allowing. And um, you might like just like raise your vibratory frequency up to a very, very high place where you feel like you're one with God. And then you, then you, you know, you, you present the healing to someone. And I would say that that's, you can do that but another, I want you to, to also be doing something with your ego at the very same time because it, it kind of acts as a bridge that kind of like brings it in and it also confuses your matrix because I think that we can, the way we pray often our 
our matrix figures out how to kind of keep us stuck anyway. We can desire, we can have faith, and the matrix finds a way around it and solidifies something so that it doesn't come through. And um, anyway, so experiment today. So right now, think of how you could do and not do.